Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron here, the CEB, Common English Study Bible. You know, it's kind of been a, a thing since the NIV Study Bible. You have the NIV Study Bible, the NKJV Study Bible, the ESV Study Bible. I'm not sure. There's probably an NLT Study Bible out there somewhere. Um, and so they, the CSB Study Bible is very popular. So they came out with the CEB Study Bible. And it's not, it's a good size. It's, it's a really good size. Now, the Common English Bible, it's a very popular translation, and it's it's basically something like the NS the NRSV is it just really never caught on a lot in the pew. It's in seminaries and all that. So it would be like a Bible for people that go to NRSV churches, which I know Fuller Theological is now, but it's traditional main like you know. Presbyterian Church USA, United Methodist Church, and uh, Lutheran Church, and, and these type things that are considered, you know, the disciples of Christ. And there's nuances within all that, but considered to be a, uh, you know, more liberal denomination. And I find this fascinating. Like, this is so rare. Like, it's almost a presentation page without the presentation in the front. So maybe they just left that for notes, whatever the case is. You know, that's pretty cool. Uh, but it is kind of strange. I don't know if the leather editions have that or not. So the CEB came out in 2013. Here's the editorial board. Let you read, see if you recognize any of those names there. As you're reading through that, I'll say here are the reliable, readable, and relevant common English Bible translation, single column setting, thousand additional pages of detailed book introductions, outlines, notes from the finest biblical studies professors, full color throughout with 200 illustrations, photographs, maps, and charts, hundreds of thousands of cost references, plus a select concordance. So here is... Uh, Joel Green's from Pasadena, the Fuller. Okay, contributors. I've heard of Bechtel. I'll let you look at this. It looks like they've even got Catholic. I think that's what OP means. I think that is that mean, or maybe that's Orthodox priest. I'd have to freshen up on my abbreviations there. I'll let you look at some more contributors. You can tell when people have like a bunch of PhDs because they don't have they don't feel the need to put PhD behind everything. Really insecure people are just always PhD, PhD, PhD. Because really, it's just about truth and knowledge. It's got nothing to do with where you get to co went to college and measuring arms and that. So, like you know, pr they don't even say these people are, <laughs> you know, PhD here, PhD there, and all that. They got the goods, in other words. And they'll allow people without PhDs as long as they have the information. That's all they care about. But again, so the CEB Study Bible, we're going to take a look at a few things in here. And it's going to be a little uh, liberal for me. You know, the CEB, I've done a, a uh, overview of that. Of course, it's going to be predicated on what's uh, modern textual critical methods. So it's not going to be from a Texas Receptus or majority text tradition. It may even have the Apocrypha in here. We'll look and see about that. I got this on sale off eBay. I want to do a video on how to buy stuff on eBay, books and Bibles. So to get you the very best deal. Yeah, it did in fact include the uh, Apocrypha in there. Let you see that. But you can, it's been my experience, like with the new Oxford Annotated, the Oxford Annotated, sometimes with the Harper, that even with liberal Bibles, you can still glean a lot of information. Has a little measures, you know, the Bible. 
and not just liberal information. I mean, sometimes they'll tell you stuff that happened in various contexts that you just don't find other places. I know a real ultra conservative guy that uses the New Interpreter's Bible Dictionary a lot, even though it's considered liberal. He's got a Hebrew calendar. And then we'll show you how it lists the articles, what they call sidebar articles. Sister Waldron was doing a crossword puzzle yesterday, and she said, what comes after Nissan? I gave her the wrong answer. I'm like, oh, it's been a while since I've done my Hebrew calendar stuff, hasn't it? <laughs> so, I think I may have turned that down too fast. But a lot, okay, sidebar articles and alphabetical charts and illustrations, canons of scripture. Here's the Jewish canon. See, stuff like this, this is actually like real useful information. Good to know. You know, you don't have to know it to be saved or anything, but it's just good to know when you're doing biblical studies. The entrance of thy word giveth light, it giveth understanding to the simple things such as that. So the Roman Catholic Old Testament canon, the Protestant Old Testament kind of gives you all that. So again, that's good information to know. Because I think like the Catholic Bibles and the Orthodox Bibles would be different. And this lets you see the Jewish Bibles that the Apocrypha is not a part. Yeah, like here's the Orthodox, the Anglican Apocrypha. See, this is just good stuff. That's really good information right there. Handy at your fingertips. And sometimes, you know, you might not could Google this and it come up. Um, or Bing it. Or Duck, Duck, Go it. Depending on what search engine you use. Or Mozilla Firefox it. Okay, so the Old Testament Genesis. Now, here's what it means by full color. The thing is, it's kind of neat in that it's the same textual of, of paper. A lot of times, you study Bibles, when they have full color, it will use a different thick texture of paper. Whereas this one don't. I may have to do like a comparison with this in the ESV study Bible and the CSB study Bible sometime. Just see how they stack up. Because both those are selling like crazy. Okay, stories about the beginnings deal more with the present than the past. The stories of Genesis focus on the present world and the lives of people who compose them. The author's plural aim was to make sense of the world. So you can see all that's liberal. <laughs> author's plural instead of Moses and God. You know, Moses would be considered the traditional stories, keeps telling stories. Um, even modern readers sense intuitively how these stories are about the present. Wow, the large Magellanic cloud. So like, that is just so gorgeous. I loved astronomy as a young person. Um, the genealogies. Okay, editors skillfully combine the stories of these three writers into a single account, which is totally disproven. The Eloist, the Jehovahist, or the Yahwist, as they call them now, and uh, the Priestly case. I guess they've put the P and the D together. All right, and so then it has world's creation in seven days. Now, in the introduction, the first age of world history. So let's see here. Uh, let's see. Creates the world in six days. So even though they're probably not six-day creationists, they realize that that's the obviously what the author is trying to get across. I do appreciate that. This creation story was likely written by one of Israel's priests. Uh, no. So, <laughs> we'll let you take a look. This is how it is. You can see the references on the side. Very small. One of the things I noticed when I was first looking through this Bible, this is one of the first study Bibles where the study notes 
the size of the study notes are about equal or greater than the size of the biblical text. I don't know if they were trying to make a statement there or not. But like I can read the study notes far easier than I can read the biblical text. Usually it's transverse because you want to give primacy to the Bible. We'll look here, Exodus 15, 26, Sabbath day rest. So again, you're going to be able to get some good information out of a Bible like this. We're just trying to do every study Bible that's ever been made. That's the real goal if the Lord helps us. If that's what the Holy Ghost wants us to keep doing. Because we love all things Bible. But this is going to be coming from a liberal perspective. I've thought about starting a podcast, All Things Bible. Let's see if the Lord wants that. He'd have to do a miracle open a way for that. Let's go to the beginning of uh, Proverbs. No, let's go to Psalms. Psalms is always a good one. Boy, a lot here. Look at that, an ancient tambourine. I wonder how old that tambourine is. I was looking to see if it had an age on there. I don't see it. But it may be on there. I did a quick look somewhere. So, you know, this is what the introductions are going to look like. Let's see if it's red letter. A lot of your modernist type Bibles are not red letter. And it's not because they think it's all the words of Jesus. It's because they would doubt that a lot of it is the word of Jesus. Now, like this, I just turned to a chart of the apostles. And see, this is a great chart. That's a fantastic chart, but it is not red letter. It is not. I wonder if they put the Apocrypha in the middle, like the King James Version, or if they kind of intersperse them with the Old Testament books. Let's see. They intersperse them. If, hey, it may not even have the Apocrypha. I was thinking for some reason it did have the Apocrypha. Let's see here. We're going to look so we can settle this once and for all. Do, 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 do. Why did I think this had the Apocrypha? It doesn't have the Apocrypha. So, but it does tell you about the Apocrypha. It tells you the Apocrypha and all kinds of different things. But it does not have the Apocrypha. Let's see what it's got in the back. Before we get there, though, I want to see what it's got between Malachi and Matthew, if anything. I don't think it has anything. No, it doesn't. Just starts you out with the Jordan River south of the Sea of Galilee. It does have a lot of neat stuff in here, though. Judea under foreign rule. What was the kingdom of heaven? Let's see, I may have just passed it. I saw another neat chart in here as well. Well, that's the Apostle's chart. It was on the family of Herod, so that was pretty cool. Okay, so Joel Green Fuller. I've got friends that just graduated with from Fuller or are graduating with PhDs. Man, I hope they didn't bite into this liberal apple. I hope they didn't, but I think they probably did. They didn't even know they did. They just sat there, listened to these people that sounded like they knew what they were talking about and believed them. And that's unfortunately, you know, ship of fools, as Tucker Carlson says. We just need to be careful professing themselves to be wise, some of these uh, seminarians and stuff, uh, professors, they become as fools, Romans 1. So it does have quite a bit of stuff here in the the back. Now the Bible's unity is pretty good. Fuller has written a tremendous book on that. And that's another thing that's lost in this day. Like when they do Bible translations and stuff, they're just translating from, uh, like they'd translate Isaiah in isolation. Whereas uh, the King James College, but not just King James, Olivet and Diodate and all these, they would translate predicated on the Bible as one contiguous whole. Guidelines for reading, big picture in mind. 
here's the concordance. It's a big concordance. And uh, very well done. I have to say that is very well accentuated. The concordance. It's readable. It's got various colors in it. Um, it's not extraordinarily small print like a lot of concordances. I really like that. It says it's got 21 full color maps designed by National Geographic and fully indexed. Oh, wow. Here they are. And see, now from the map sections, you can get all kinds of great information. You can get great Bible maps from like Rose Publishing for $3.99. You can even buy Bible maps that you can insert in the back of your Bible. But, you know, a Bible like this may have some different settlements and things that you wouldn't normally find other places. So that is really, really good. In 21, you know, National Geographic, obviously going to be liberal. My friend Ron Libby pastors an amazing church, and you can kind of, I don't know if you can see the National Geographic headquarters from his church, or it's right up the street, but I remember being there many years ago, and uh, it was close. Hey, it actually takes them through a river during the uh, Red Sea crossing. It's better than most Bibles. Here's Ezekiel's vision. So like that is a handy, handy map. When you're reading Ezekiel chapters 46, 47, and 48, man, that is great. So, you know, again, I get study Bibles even though I may not care for the translation for the information that's in them because they're a one-stop shop for information you really can't get anywhere else. Bible Study Bibles are unique in that respect. And so, but now if you're a fan of the CSCEB, you might really like this. This is about nine and a half inches tall. It's, it's a very good size for a study Bible. The, uh, the print and the text just isn't that big. Everything else, you know, it's kind of really good. I don't know why I thought it had the Apocrypha. I guess it would have said it had the Apocrypha like the Oxford Annotated comes with the Apocrypha or not. I guess when I was researching this Bible, I didn't look and see if it had the Apocrypha. It mentioned the Apocrypha so much, I assumed it had the Apocrypha. It was just an assumption on my part. But this is a very good size for a study Bible, not for a Bible you just want to carry with you, but for a study Bible, it's an excellent size. Let's see. So that is uh, six and a half inches or so in width. So, I mean, that's just good. And uh, the depth of it here. Let's see how deep it is. It's... Uh, just a couple inches. About what I thought. So the CEB Study Bible, just live for God. Live for God. God bless you. I love you in Jesus' name.